Doug, somebody writes in to ask, is there such a thing as toxic masculinity? Um, yes, there is. There's, this is a fallen world and there is a toxic everything, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? So you could... There's no gift that you can't misuse. There's no gift you can't misuse. You can buy a case of water and drink enough bottles of it that you will die. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> right? right? Um, and, you know, and, and people periodically, you know, I remember years and years ago, uh, I think it was Dr. Pepper, uh, somebody fed, you know, there was a certain sweetener in Dr. P- Pepper that was alleged to be carcinogenic or maybe all soft drinks. Okay. But in order to get that result, they had fed the equivalent of multiple cases of Dr. Pepper to a rat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I, I think, okay, um, yeah, I think that if you take too much of anything, uh-huh. uh, if, then you're going to get sick and die. So there is such a, so every good gift is, um, can be made toxic by okay. ignoring the boundaries that God's established for it. There's toxic masculinity. There's toxic uh, femininity. Uh, when has masculinity been become toxic? What what ex- what does it look like when it actually becomes toxic? Yeah. So when uh, when a husband is, um, let's say he is a blustering, angry man, mm-hmm. right? Let's say it's the sort of situation around the home where everybody's walking on eggs. He punches holes in the sheetrock. He gets his way by yelling, um, mm-hmm. by gaslighting everybody. Um, he is a foot taller than everyone. He's got a deep voice. He is. He throws his weight around mm-hmm. uh, that way, either with uh, violence uh, expressed or implied or hinted at. Mm-hmm. Um, I, would, I would describe that as toxic okay. masculinity. Uh, because what he's doing is he's being hard. He's he, he the masculinity is hard, uh-huh. and so what he's doing, and the toxic nature of this is he's taking that hardness and he's using it on his family, instead of using it for his family. Mm. So what a man needs to do, he needs to be hard. If he's not hard, he can't protect his family. If he's not mm. hard, he can't go out and do hard things to provide for his family. Mm-hmm. But when he's hard the right way when he's being masculine the right way and he takes responsibility and he be, he puts himself as a wall between the mean old world and his small children mm-hmm. he takes the hit he takes the buffer he he does the he does these things he's being hard for his family um, but a certain kind of person takes all of those gifts and is hard on his family mm-hmm. and what he's doing is he's um He's punching down. He's he's taking the people who needed protection. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were defenseless or they were vulnerable in a certain respect. And because they were vulnerable, he went after them. Um, mm-hmm. So you, what you want to do is to teach your boys, for example, uh, if you've got a little boy who starts picking on his little sister, mm-hmm. um, you need to take your son aside and say, listen, uh, you're sister needs to be protected from the dragon and you need to be saint george yeah right this morning you've been being the dragon Uh (laughs) right and you don't want to be the dragon who comes after your sister you want to be saint george who gets in between the dragon and your sister seems like that's that's a parenting um that's a major parenting flag when you have a son who enjoys cruelty that's something that has to be really addressed and mortified that's that's right if i so basically uh and and the issue is not whether um, the issue is not whether you think the the um, recipient of the cruelty even noticed or knows. Uh-huh. So if if a father finds his son pulling wings off of flies, uh-huh. that that boy ought to get a f- spanking. Uh-huh. And there shouldn't be there shouldn't be any discussion about whether flies have a nervous system and could feel anything, because the the point that the boy was exhibiting was I like being cruel. Uh-huh. I like being destructive. Um, so you could take something that has no nervous system at all. Maybe you say sister's doll, uh-huh. and he's and he's torturing the doll or pulling the doll apart. As again, a spanking because that is uh, not what your strength is for. Uh-huh. So what is the what is the masculinity that is good um, that is considered by many to be toxic? Like wh- um, because that's that's 
that um, phrase is flung around very haphazardly. So what is the masculinity that is good, that is that is um, called toxic, and why do they want to call that toxic? So um, ma- uh, godly masculinity, it, I, I define godly masculinity as uh, the glad assumption of sacrificial responsibility. Okay, that's what godly masculinity is, the glad assumption of uh, sacrificial responsibility. But in order to assume that responsibility, the man in the family has to be the head, Mm -hmm. right? So it's an authority issue. So when a woman complains that just simply the fact that he's the head, Mm -hmm. right? Simply the fact that he's assumed responsibility for the whole family. Mm -hmm. Is she not an individual with her own hopes, dreams, and aspirations? Doesn't she get an equal say? And uh, what do you mean he's the head? Uh, what that that's the voice of toxic femininity mm. right mm-hmm. the, uh, there's there's toxicity there but it's a rebellion against the way god made the world so god made the world in such a way that the husband is the head the wife is to look up to her husband as the as her head calling him lord mm-hmm. uh, as sarah did uh, and so that honor that uh, subservience that submission, that spirit of submission, which the Bible commends in repeated places over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. Um, if there's anything that's clear in the New Testament, it's that husbands are the head and wives are to submit to their husbands. Uh, if if the Bible doesn't reveal that to us, the Bible has revealed nothing, mm-hmm. right? Um, and so people who want to say, well, let's do a Greek word study and kafale, mm-hmm. the word for head means... Uh, like the source of a river. It doesn't necessarily mean authority or you know, all kinds of complicated mm-hmm. games. Um, th- what is happening there is in the grip of egalitarianism and envy, uh, a person in a subordinate position has envied a person in a position of authority and and wants to take it or get equal with it or mm-hmm. um, strive with it. Mm-hmm. And I think I think that that's uh, actually what's going on in Genesis. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Uh, that's the that's the perennial tension between the sexes. Um, the only other time that construction happens in Genesis three is in Genesis four, yeah. where where Cain is warned mm-hmm. that sin is crouching at the door and um, and wants to uh, has a desire for you, and you must master it. And so I, th- I think that women have a propensity to challenge their husband's authority. And when they submit to that temptation, when they, when they give way to that temptation, that's toxic femininity, not mm-hmm. toxic masculinity. Seems like to connect us to one of the earlier questions, uh, the six-day creation, that ability to just look at the text and say, here's what it says, and to not be affected by the cool shaming Mm-hmm. Um, that's going on all around. I mean, it seems like it's one of the fundamental um, skills necessary for good exegesis. Um, oh, absolutely. And I've said this a number of times, and I'll, I'll, I'll say it again here because this is really important. Many times, liberal commentators, unbelieving commentators, and feminist commentators mm-hmm. are more to be trusted with what the text actually says. Than, because, because than, than an evangelical, evangelical pastor who's trying to fit in. <laughs> that, that's right. An evangelical pastor, because an evangelical, after he's done his exege- exegesis, he's stuck with whatever he came up with. Yeah. Right? Whatever he said, Paul said here, he has to affirm also. Yeah. Uh, a feminist scholar can say something like, look, let's be frank. The Bible is patriarchal. Mm-hmm. Well, that's true. Right? And so the feminist scholar is more to be trusted on representing what the Bible actually teaches to us mm-hmm. than an, a soft evangelical complementarian who wants to waffle and noodle and backfill until mm-hmm. he's said, yes, um, yes, you, you know, there's a fog that comes from the pulpit, at the end of which time nobody knows exactly what you're supposed to do. Yeah. But Paul's very clear. Uh, wives, submit to your husbands in everything. There you go. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for watching. If you'd like more of this kind of content, be sure to check out Canon Plus. That's where you can find all of my audiobooks and a huge collection of resources to help you engage with culture and live faithfully. 
By subscribing to Canon Plus, you're supporting the making of this show and more. If you haven't joined up yet, you can get your first month for just 99 cents by using the promo code DOUG99.